Once upon a time, in a big sunny village, everyone was busy and happy. This village was a special place with lots of good soil that helped everyone grow big, sweet fruits and vegetables. People in this village were known for being great farmers, strong hunters, and everyone seemed to have plenty. In this village lived a couple named Chima and Kumi. They had a big house, wore nice clothes, and had lots of things that made other people say, wow. But even with all their shiny things, Chima and his wife Kumi felt a little sad inside. They had been married for a very long time, but didn't have any children. They really wanted to hear little feet running around their home. People in the village sometimes whispered when they saw Kumi. They said maybe she couldn't have babies. She was barren. Or maybe her husband was doing something mysterious to keep them from having a baby. In turn, increasing their wealth. But that wasn't true. Chima and Kumi loved each other very much and just wanted a little one to share their love with. So, while the house was filled with laughter and the sounds of success, the Chima's home was a bit quieter, a little more gentle, waiting for a new joy to fill up all the spaces. In the heart of the village lived Kumi, who was not just any woman. She was very special because she came from a family of the river goddess. This meant she was very beautiful, with a smile like the bright moon and kindness that made flowers bloom. Everyone who met Kumi loved her because she was sweet to everyone, just like her mother, the river goddess. But even with her kind heart and lovely smile, Kumi was sad inside. She and Chima wanted a child more than anything. They visited many wise healers and doctors in the land. They climbed steep hills to see wise men and crossed rivers to find special doctors who knew about herbs and magic stones. Each time, they would return home with hope, thinking maybe this time they would be blessed with a child. But days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, and still, there was no little laughter in their home. People in the village started to whisper even more, wondering why such kind people couldn't have their wish come true. Kumi kept being kind, kept smiling, but every night, she hoped the stars would hear her wish, and in her heart, she always carried a little spark of hope, waiting for the day when her dreams would come true. One warm morning, Kumi went to the stream, far away from the village, to fetch some water. The stream was a quiet place where the water danced over the stones and whispered secrets to the trees. Kumi liked going there because it was peaceful and she could talk to the water, hoping it would send her wishes to her mother, the river goddess. As Kumi was filling her big pot with the cool, clear water, she noticed an old woman sitting by the side of the stream. The old woman looked very tired and thirsty. She had a kind face and eyes that sparkled like the stars. Kumi smiled at her and said hello. The old woman smiled back and asked if she could have some water. Without thinking twice, Kumi poured some of her water into the old woman's pot. The old woman's face lit up with a big, thankful smile. She reached into her bag and pulled out a small, shiny stone. It was a wish stone, she said, very magical and very rare. The old woman told Kumi that because she was so kind, she wanted to give her this special gift. Make a wish, dear, the old woman said, and it will come true. Kumi held the wish stone tightly in her hand, closed her eyes, and made the biggest wish of her life. She wished for a child, a little one, to bring joy and laughter to her and Chima's home. With a hopeful heart and the magical stone now in her pocket, Kumi headed back to the village, wondering if perhaps, just perhaps, her wish might come true. Not long after Kumi made her wish with the magical stone, something wonderful happened. One morning, Kumi woke up feeling different. She soon discovered the happiest news. She was going to have a baby. She was pregnant. When she told her husband, he was overjoyed. 
their home filled with laughter and smiles that hadn't been seen in a long while. As Kumi's belly grew, so did their excitement. The whole village started to buzz with happiness for the couple. Everyone said it was a miracle and they all waited eagerly to meet the new baby. Through that time, Chima didn't let Kumi do any work just to protect their long-awaited baby. The villagers too helped Kumi with errands like fetching water from the stream and going to the market because they were happy for her that finally she's going to be having a baby after so many years with Chima. Then the day came. Kumi gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. They named her Rahma, which means a long-awaited beauty because she was just that, a beautiful child they had waited so long for. Rahma had bright eyes and a gentle smile that reminded everyone of Kumi's kindness. The whole village came to see Babi Rahma. They brought gifts to celebrate her arrival. Soft blankets woven with colorful patterns, tiny clothes, shiny beads, and lots of love. The air was filled with songs and laughter. People danced and shared delicious food. It was a big, joyful party. Chima and Kumi were so happy. They looked at Rama and saw their dreams come true. The little family felt complete and their home was now filled with the sweet sounds of a baby's giggles and coos. It was a time of great joy and everyone in the village shared in their happiness, hopeful for the bright future that lay ahead for Rahma. But just when everyone thought that happy days were here to stay for the Chima's family, something very sad happened. Just as Rama grew older, misfortune started knocking on their door. In just one day, everything began to change. It started with Chima's farm. All the crops suddenly withered and turned to dust. Then the animals in the fields grew weak and wouldn't eat. It was as if the land itself was sad. That same day, a big fire swept through the market and Kumi's fabric store was lost. All her beautiful clothes turned to ashes. People in the village were shocked. They whispered to each other, how could so much bad luck come all at once? Some started to say it must be because of Rahma. They thought that maybe, just maybe, Rahma brought this bad luck with her. It was a silly idea, but fear can make people believe strange things. Chima and Kumi tried not to listen to the whispers. They loved Rahma more than anything and knew that no child could bring such troubles. But as more things went wrong, even their closest friends began to keep their distance. The warm smiles they used to see in the village turned into worried looks. Kumi started thinking, maybe there's something more, something dark to the wish stone from the old woman by the stream that she didn't know about. However, she kept this thought to herself alone because she never told Chima, her husband, about the stone, the old woman, nor the wish she made by the river. The family felt alone. Their home, once filled with joy and laughter, now felt heavy with sadness. Chima worked harder than ever to fix what had been broken and to find new ways to bring in money. Kumi spent her days trying to cheer up Rama and Chima, even though her heart was breaking too. It was a tough time for the little family. They held on to each other, hoping that someday soon, the sun would shine bright on their lives again. But for now, they faced each day as it came, together, but apart from everyone else. As the days turned into weeks, Chima's struggle to keep his family afloat grew harder. With the farm gone and no store to bring in money, he had to find other ways to make ends meet. Every morning, before the sun even peeked over the horizon, Chima would leave his home to look for work in and around the village. He did everything he could find, chopping wood, carrying water from the stream for other families, and helping to build new huts. His hands, once used to gently tending crops, now bore the rough marks of hard labor. 
Yet, no matter how exhausted he felt, Chima kept pushing. He knew he had to be strong for Kumi and Rahma. But the villagers, who once admired him for his success, now looked at him with different eyes. The whispers grew louder. Some said it was bad luck to be near Chima and his family. Others even crossed the street to avoid walking too close. It was as if they thought the bad luck that struck Chima might rub off on them. This hurt Chima deeply. He remembered the days when he was respected and welcomed everywhere in the village. Now, seeing doors close and backs turn made his efforts feel even heavier. But he never showed his pain at home. Around Kumi and Rahma, he would smile and speak of hope and better days ahead. At night, when Rahma was asleep, Kumi and Chima would sit quietly, holding hands, their hearts heavy with worry, yet bound by love. They spoke little, but their grip said everything. We'll get through this together. Despite the darkness around them, their love for, for each other and for Rama was a light that kept them going, a silent promise that as long as they were together, they could face anything. But Kumi was still holding a secret, a secret about the wish she made by the river, one that she thought would break her home if she told her husband. But would it? One day, when the sun was just rising, Chima went into the forest to gather wood, as he had many mornings before. The forest was quiet. The only sounds were the rustling leaves and distant bird calls. Chima was deep in thought worrying about his family, when suddenly he felt a sharp pain in his leg. A snake hidden among the fallen leaves had bitten him. Chima knew right away that it was a dangerous snake. He tried to get back to the village as fast as he could, but the poison was too quick. By the time he reached the edge of the village, he could barely walk. He collapsed, calling for help but the help came too late. The village healer did everything he could, but there was nothing more to be done. Chima's last thoughts were of Kumi and Rahma, his heart aching with the wish to see them once more, to hold them and tell them everything would be okay, but he never got the chance. As the sun set, Chima passed away, leaving Kumi and Rahma alone in a world that seemed to grow colder with each passing day. The news of Chima's death spread quickly through the village, while some villagers felt sad for Kumi and Rahma. Others just shook their heads and muttered about bad luck. The coldness towards the little family grew even more. People stopped visiting and whispers turned into open avoidance. Kumi was heartbroken. Not only had she lost her beloved husband, but the isolation from the village made her grief even harder to bear. She tried to stay strong for Rahma, who was too young to understand why her father was not coming home. Kumi would hold Rahma close every night, whispering stories of her father's love and strength, trying to keep his memory alive for her little girl. The days became a blur of sadness and struggle. Kumi faced each morning with a heavy heart, knowing she was now the only one who could provide for Rahma. The weight of loneliness and loss bore down on her, but she kept going, fueled by her love for her daughter and the memory of Chima's unwavering strength. Years passed in the village and Rahma grew into an adult, but the coldness towards Kumi and Rahma remained. Kumi did her best to fill her days with small joys and laughter for Rahma's sake even as her own heart struggled with grief and loneliness. Then, one quiet morning, tragedy struck again, sudden and swift. Kumi had been feeling tired more often, the weight of her sorrows like stones in her heart. That morning, as she prepared breakfast, she felt an overwhelming weakness. She managed to call Rama to her side, held her close, and whispered words of love and strength. Then, as peacefully as a gentle stream stops flowing, Kumi's heart gave out and she passed away, leaving young Rahma alone. Rahma was just 18 years old, 
a little too young to understand the permanence of death, but old enough to feel the deep sting of losing her mother. She tried to wake Kumi, her little hand shaking her, but it was no use. The village healer came and confirmed the sad truth. Kumi was laid to rest beside Chima, under the shade of the village's oldest tree, leaving Rahma in a world that seemed too large and too cruel for a girl her age. With both parents gone, Rahma's life became harder than ever. Her relatives, who were not nice, took over all the land and everything in the big house. They left Rahma with nothing. The other girls in the village were warned by their parents to stay away from her, whispering that misfortune followed her like a shadow. Rahma, with her big, sad eyes and too quiet voice, faced days filled with isolation and nights filled with loneliness. Every morning, she would wake up with the sun and go to the stream to fetch water. She carried her small pot, which was almost too big for her little hands, but she managed because she knew this was the only way to earn a bit of food or a few coins. Rahma also helped the neighbors by sweeping their yards and clearing away grasses. Her small acts of service were her way of reaching out, trying to connect with a world that seemed to have forgotten her. Some villagers appreciated her help and would give her leftovers from their meals, while others merely nodded and let her go on her way without a word. One day, as she was helping a wealthy woman from another village in the market, a misunderstanding turned her world upside down. The woman, noticing that her purse felt lighter, immediately accused Rahma of stealing from her. Rama was shocked and scared. She knew she hadn't taken anything, but her protest fell on deaf ears. The market quickly filled with murmurs and angry glares directed at her. The woman's voice grew louder, drawing more attention. This girl is a thief, she declared for all to hear. Rama's eyes filled with tears as she desperately tried to explain that she was innocent. But the more she pleaded, the less people believed her. The market chief intervened and, without much investigation, decided that Rama was no longer welcome at the market. You must leave this market. Don't come back, he said sternly. With a heavy heart, Rama left the market, the eyes of the crowd burning into her back. She felt humiliated and helpless, her small world crumbling around her. Walking home, the tears wouldn't stop. Rahma felt more alone than ever. The market had been a place of promise, a place where she could earn her way honestly. Now, even that was taken from her based on a false accusation. She felt her vulnerability deeply, knowing that without the market, surviving would be even harder. Feeling all alone, Rama remembered the big bright palace in her village where the kind queen lived. Rama went to the palace and asked for help. The queen saw that Rama was very sad and needed a place to stay. So she said, you can live here and be one of my maids. Rama was thankful. She missed her big house, but was happy to be in the warm and welcoming palace. Now, she had a new home and it was the start of a big adventure for her in the palace. Rahma started living in the palace and soon got used to the new ways. Every day, she helped around, always with a smile and a kind heart. She was quick to learn and always did her best. The queen noticed how smart and kind Rahma was, and she liked her a lot. Soon, Rama became one of the queen's favorite attendants. She helped the queen with her dresses, her meals, and during big meetings, the queen trusted Rama so much that she often asked her for advice, even though Rama was still young. But not everyone in the palace was happy about this. Some of the other maids and servants felt jealous. They wondered, why does the queen like Rama so much? Why not us? They would whisper and sometimes not be very nice to Rama. Rama knew about the whispers 
but she kept being kind and doing her job well. She remembered what her father had always said, be kind no matter what. So she smiled at everyone, even if they didn't smile back. Despite the jealousy, Rama's days were filled with new things to learn and do, and she felt happy to be so close to the kind queen. She knew she had found a new place where she could be herself, help others, and maybe even make a difference. One bright day, the palace was full of laughter and music. It was a special day because everyone was gathered for a big feast to celebrate the king's birthday. Rahma was busy, helping set the tables with shiny plates and cups. The hall looked beautiful, and Rahma felt happy to be part of such a joyful day. But suddenly, during the feast, something very bad happened. The king started feeling sick. His face turned pale, and he fell from his chair. Everyone screamed and ran to help, but it was too late. The king was gone. The palace went from loud and happy to quiet and sad very fast. Right after this sad moment, someone said, Rama did it. She poisoned the king. Rama was shocked. Her hands shook and her voice was tiny when she said, No, I didn't do anything bad to the king. But the person pointed to a cup from which the king had drunk and said, Rahma gave the king his drink. Everyone started whispering and looking at Rahma. She felt scared and alone. The evidence, the cup she had given to the king, made everyone think it was her, even though she knew she didn't do it. The queen was very sad and confused. She didn't want to believe Rahma would do such a thing. But the evidence was hard to ignore. Did you do this terrible thing? The queen asked Rahma. Her voice was stern and loud and it filled the big room. No, my queen, I didn't do it, Rama said, shaking her head. She looked very sad and scared because it was not true. But someone in the room shouted, She's lying. She did it. I know she did. Now everyone started talking all at once. Some said, Yes, she did. And some said, No, she couldn't. The queen looked at everyone. Silence, she said loudly. And the room went quiet. We will find out the truth, she told them. Rama just stood there, hoping someone would believe she was telling the truth. That night, Rama cried throughout, knowing she didn't do it, but not knowing how to prove she was innocent. She hoped that somehow, the truth would come out and everyone would see she was not a bad person. After the king's sudden passing, the whole palace was filled with whispers and dark looks. People were scared and upset and they didn't know who to trust anymore. The prince, who was very sad about his father, at first believed what everyone said about Rahma. He thought maybe she really did something terrible. But soon the prince started to think more and more about it. He remembered seeing Rahma at the feast, how busy she was helping everyone and how kind she always had been. He thought, could someone who is always so kind do something so awful? As days passed, the prince noticed that some things didn't add up. He heard different stories from the palace staff. Some said Rama was near the king all night. Others said she was across the room when the king took his last drink. The prince also found out that some of the people who were saying bad things about Rama didn't like her because they were jealous. This made him even more suspicious that maybe Rama was being blamed for something she didn't do. The prince decided to watch and listen carefully. He spoke quietly to people he trusted to find out more. The more he learned, the more he doubted that Rahma had done anything wrong. However, in the palace, where the halls echoed with secrets, a new whisper began to spread, soft as a shadow, as people started seeing the prince around Rahma. Late one evening, by the flicker of candlelight, a few maids huddled together, their voices low. I heard it wasn't Rahma at all, 
one maid said, her eyes wide as she looked around to make sure no one else could hear. I think it was the prince who did this very bad thing. The prince, another gasped, her hand covering her mouth. But why would he do such a thing? They say he might have given the king the poison drink, the first maid whispered. Maybe the king knew something about the prince, something secret and not good. Or perhaps he did that just to quickly become the king of our land. This new story spread through the palace like wind through leaves. Now, not just Rama, but also the prince was whispered about behind closed doors and long curtains. Rama felt a little relief but also worry because she knew that if the prince was involved, finding out the truth could be even more dangerous. Meanwhile, the prince walked through the palace, his face calm and royal, but his eyes flickering like he had a storm inside him. Now, Everyone in the palace was watching, waiting, wondering what really happened to the king and who in the palace was not what they seemed. Some people were whispering about other enemies of the king who might have wanted to harm him. Others were making plans to use the king's death to gain more power for themselves. The prince felt very alone trying to find the truth among so many secrets. He knew he had to be very careful and very clever if he was going to help Rama and find out what really happened to his father. So, he kept his eyes and ears open, hoping to find a way to clear Rama's name and bring peace back to the palace. The queen was very troubled by all the sadness and suspicion in her palace. She loved her husband, the king, very much and wanted to know the truth about what happened to him. She also cared about Rahma, who had been a loyal and kind attendant. The queen could not sleep, thinking about the possibility of injustice being done under her roof. So, the queen, now worried and wary, made a new rule just for her. Rahma must not leave the palace without my say-so, she declared in a firm voice that rang through the grand hall. The queen also then decided to start a private investigation. She called in a wise old detective from another village, someone who had no ties to anyone in the palace. She told him, find out the truth no matter what it is. Rahma, still under watch by the palace guards, felt scared but also a little hopeful that the truth would finally come out. She knew she hadn't done anything wrong and hoped the detective would see that too. Every day, she answered questions and tried her best to remember everything about the night the king died. Meanwhile, the palace was full of whispers and sideways glances. Some people tried to be nice to Rama, but others avoided her, thinking she might be a criminal. Rama felt very lonely, but she kept being kind to everyone, even those who doubted her. As the detective asked questions and looked into what happened, he found out that the cup the king drank from had been handled by several people that night. He also learned that there were many visitors in the palace that day, some of whom were not well known to the royal family. The investigation made the palace even more tense. Everyone was nervous about what would be found next. Would the detective find out who really hurt the king? Or would Rahma be blamed for something she didn't do? Rahma did her best to stay strong, helping around the palace and showing everyone that she wasn't the bad person some thought she was. She waited, hoped, and prayed that soon everyone would know she was innocent and the real wrongdoer would be found. As the investigation deepened, the wise old detective found clues that twisted the story in unexpected ways. He discovered that not just Rahma, but the prince too, had been falsely accused. Someone had crafted clever lies to make it look like they both had reasons to hurt the king. The detective gathered Rahma and the prince one evening in a quiet room. It seems, he began, looking over his glasses, that there are those within these walls 
who wish to stir chaos for their own gain. The prince, feeling a surge of anger and betrayal, turned to Rahma. It appears we've both been played as pawns in this dangerous game, he said. Rahma nodded, her eyes wide with realization and fear. I never believed you harmed my father, the prince continued his voice firm, and now I see we must join forces to uncover the true villain among us. Rahma, relieved yet still anxious, agreed. Yes, my prince, let's find out who is behind this for the sake of the king and the kingdom. Together, they started retracing steps, questioning the palace staff anew and examining every piece of evidence with fresh eyes. They discovered forged letters and suspicious transactions that seemed designed to point fingers at them both. This deception runs deep, Rama said, as they pored over documents late one night. Whoever did this knows the palace well. The prince, who had started to see Rahma in a new light, nodded. We'll get to the bottom of this, for my father and for your innocence. Their teamwork started to bring them closer, building trust and a bond that had been absent before. The palace continued to whisper about the unfolding drama, but now Rahma and the prince were no longer just subjects of rumor. They were detectives in their own right, piecing together a puzzle that someone had hoped would remain unsolved. As Rahma and the prince continued their secret investigation, they uncovered a trail that led unexpectedly close to Rahma's own past. One evening, while they were looking through old visitor logs, Rahma's eyes caught a familiar name. It was her uncle's name, marked as a guest in the palace, on the very day the king died. Rama gasped, her heart sinking. Look, it's Uncle Thomas, she whispered to the prince, pointing at the scribbled name in the ledger. He was here, and I didn't even know. The prince leaned closer, his brow furrowed. Your uncle? The one who took everything from you after your parents? His voice trailed off as he put the pieces together. Yes, that's him. He's the only family I have left, but he's never been kind to me. He took everything when my parents went to the stars, Rahma explained. Her voice tinged with sadness and a growing sense of betrayal. Why would he be here? And on that specific day, the prince pondered aloud, tapping the logbook with his finger. Determined to find out more, Rahma and the prince decided to pay a visit to Rahma's uncle under the guise of reconnecting family ties. When they arrived at his large, gloomy house, Uncle Thomas greeted them with a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. My dear Rama, what a surprise to see you here and with the prince no less, Uncle Thomas said, his voice smoothed like honey but with a slight edge. We were just in the neighborhood, uncle. Thought it would be nice to catch up, Rama said, forcing a smile as she tried to look around the room for any sign of his involvement in the king's death. As they talked, the prince carefully steered the conversation towards the day of the king's feast. It must have been quite the event at the palace that day. I heard you were one of the guests, he said casually watching Uncle Thomas closely. Uncle Thomas stiffened slightly, his eyes darting away before regaining composure. Oh yes, quite a day. Terribly unfortunate what happened to the king, he replied, his voice a bit too casual. Rahma and the prince exchanged quick glances, their suspicions growing. The air felt heavy with unspoken truths. Before they left, Rahma managed to subtly swipe a small book she noticed, picking out from Uncle Thomas's cloth pocket while he fetched them drinks. It was a diary with dates and notes that might just hold the clue they needed. Back at the palace, Rama and the prince poured over the diary. It was filled with plans and meetings that hinted at Uncle Thomas's deep envy and greed. He had not only taken Rama's inheritance, but now, they discovered his ambitions reached even darker depths. This explains so much, Rama said, her fingers trembling as she turned the pages. 
He's been plotting for power, and what better way than to remove those standing in his way? The prince nodded, his face set in a grim line. We'll bring him to justice, Rahma, for both your parents and my father. We'll make sure he can't hurt anyone else. As they prepared to expose Uncle Thomas, Rama felt a mix of fear and courage. She was about to confront the man who had destroyed her family. But this time, she wasn't alone. She had the prince by her side, and together, they were determined to right the wrongs that had shadowed her life and the kingdom. After finding the diary, Rama and the prince learned a big secret. Rama's uncle Thomas was very, very greedy. Long ago, when Rama's father got a lot of money, Uncle Thomas got very jealous. He wanted all that money for himself, so he made a mean plan. On that sad day when everyone was having fun at the king's big party, Uncle Thomas did something very bad. He put something yucky, a poison, in the king's drink when nobody was looking. This made the king very sick, and soon he couldn't laugh or smile anymore. Uncle Thomas thought, if the king was gone, he could become very important in the kingdom and possibly become the new king. And he also made another sneaky plan. He told lies about Rahma, saying she was the one who made the king sick. He hoped that if everyone believed Rama did it, she would probably be stoned to death or banished from the kingdom and never come back again. This way, Rama wouldn't be able to ask for her father's money back and Uncle Thomas could keep all of it. It was a very naughty plan, and Uncle Thomas was hoping no one would find out. But Rahma and the prince were smart. They found the diary and read Uncle Thomas's plans. They knew they had to tell everyone the truth. They went to the queen and showed her the diary. The queen was very sad to see how mean Uncle Thomas had been. She called for a big meeting with all the people in the kingdom. At the meeting, the prince told everyone about the bad things Uncle Thomas did. Uncle Thomas tried to say it wasn't true, but the prince had the diary to show everyone the truth. Everyone in the kingdom was surprised and a little scared to learn about Uncle Thomas's mean plans. They were also sorry for thinking Rama did something bad when she didn't. The queen said, we must make sure Uncle Thomas can't do any more naughty things. So, they decided Uncle Thomas should be taken to his house, where everyone can keep eyes on him till the elders decide what to do with him. Rahma felt sad that her uncle had been so mean, but she was also relieved that everyone knew the truth now. The kingdom could be happy again, and Rahma didn't have to worry about being sent away. The prince smiled at Rama and said, you're very brave Rama, we did it together. Rama smiled back, happy that the truth made everything right again. After they found out the truth, Rama's uncle Thomas was arrested by the palace guards. He was taken to a big room in the palace where all important decisions were made. This room was like a classroom, but instead of learning lessons, it was where the kingdom figured out right from wrong. Now, it was time for Uncle Thomas to explain his actions. The room was full of people from all around the kingdom. They came to see what would happen to Uncle Thomas and to hear all about the naughty things he had done. Rama was there too, standing quietly, feeling a little nervous, but glad that the truth was finally going to be known by everyone. The queen was very serious as she listened to everything. When it was time, the prince stood up and told everyone about the bad stuff Uncle Thomas did, just like they found in the diary. He showed the diary to everyone so they could see it was true. Uncle Thomas tried to say it wasn't true. He looked really worried and kept shaking his head, but the evidence was too strong. Everyone could see what he had written in his diary about his mean plans. Then. It was Rahma's turn to speak. She stood up and looked around at all the faces watching her. She told them how sad she was that her uncle had done such bad things 
especially when all she ever wanted was to be a good maid in the palace. I didn't do anything wrong, Rama said softly, and I missed my father and mother very much. When Rahma finished talking, there were tears in some people's eyes. They felt sorry for not believing her before. The queen stood up and said loudly so everyone could hear, Rahma is innocent. She has been a loyal and kind person to us all, and we owe her an apology. There was clapping and some people even cheered. Rama felt a big relief in her heart. Like a heavy backpack, full of rocks was taken off her shoulders. She smiled, finally feeling free again. The queen then looked at Uncle Thomas and said, For being so greedy and telling such big lies, you cannot stay in the kingdom anymore. You must go far away where you can't do any more harm and never ever return to this land. Uncle Thomas was taken away and Rahma knew he wouldn't be able to bother her or anyone else again. After the trial, the queen came over to Rahma and gave her a big hug. I'm sorry, Rahma, she said, and thank you for helping us find the truth. You are brave and good and always welcome here in the palace. Rahma felt happy and safe again. The kingdom had seen her goodness, and she had helped save the kingdom from Uncle Thomas's mean plans. Now, she could look forward to happy days in the palace, knowing everyone trusted and believed in her once more. After the big trial, things in the kingdom started to feel better. The sun seemed to shine a bit brighter, and the flowers in the palace garden looked a little more colorful. Everyone was relieved that the truth was out and the bad feelings were going away. Rahma was happy again, helping around the palace and sharing smiles with everyone. The prince who had watched Rahma be so brave and honest started to see her in a new light. He noticed how she treated everyone with kindness, even those who hadn't been nice to her before. Day by day, the prince found himself talking more to Rahma, wanting to learn more about her and tell her about his own thoughts and dreams. One lovely evening, as Rahma and the prince were walking in the palace gardens, the prince looked at the beautiful flowers and then at Rahma. He saw that she was as lovely as the flowers and his heart felt full of warmth and affection for her. Rahma, he said, stopping under a big leafy tree. I've seen your kindness and courage. You've shown me what true strength is. I've grown to admire you so much. Rahma blushed a little and smiled, looking up at the prince with big, wondering eyes. The prince took a deep breath and continued. I wonder if you would think about being more than just my friend. Would you think about being my wife? Rahma's eyes grew wide with surprise. She had never thought the prince would ask her something so important. She remembered all they had been through together and how kind he had been. She thought about how nice it would be to always have such a good friend by her side. Yes, Rama finally said, her voice soft but sure. Yes, I would love that. The prince grinned, his heart leaping with joy. He took Rama's hand and they walked together, talking about their future. News of the royal proposal spread quickly through the kingdom and everyone was excited. They all loved Rahma and were happy for their prince. They started preparing for a big wedding, the biggest the kingdom had ever seen. As the wedding day approached, Rama and the prince spent a lot of time together, planning their future and helping the kingdom heal even more. They visited townspeople, listened to their stories, and made plans to help everyone feel safe and happy. On a bright and sunny day, Rama and the prince got married in the palace gardens, surrounded by all their friends and the happy people of the kingdom. The air was filled with music and laughter, and everyone celebrated the union of Rama and the prince, who had found love and trust in each other after a time of trouble. Their wedding was not just a celebration of love, but a symbol of the kingdom coming together, stronger and happier than before. Rama and the prince looked forward to a future 
where they would rule with kindness and fairness, always remembering the lessons they had learned through their journey together. The day of the final verdict was a solemn one. The palace court was filled with nervous energy as everyone awaited the queen's decision. Rahma stood quietly, her fate hanging in the balance. The queen, looking both regal and serious, rose to address the gathering. Today, justice has been served, the queen announced. She revealed that Rahma's uncle was indeed the true perpetrator of the king's murder, a revelation that sent whispers of shock throughout the crowd. The uncle was led away, his head bowed in shame, to face his punishment, banished forever from the kingdom, never to come back again. Turning to Rahma, the queen's expression softened. Rahma, you have shown immense strength and grace under fire. The kingdom owes you an apology, she declared, officially exonerating Rahma. The courtroom erupted in applause, a sound that washed over Rahma like a healing wave, finally clearing her name and restoring her honor. With the truth revealed and justice served, the kingdom slowly began to mend. The queen, determined to prevent such a tragedy from happening again, introduced new laws and measures. These focused on greater transparency in court affairs and stronger oversight of the royal council. Trust was gradually restored as the inhabitants of the palace and the wider kingdom saw the positive changes taking effect. Rahma, now seen as a heroine, worked alongside the prince to heal the community. Together, they visited towns and villages, listening to the people's concerns and ensuring their voices were heard. This fostered a renewed sense of unity and loyalty among the people, strengthening the bonds within the kingdom. The story closes on a hopeful note, under the bright skies of a new dawn, with Rama and the prince now leading the way, the kingdom looked forward to a future filled with promise. Their leadership was marked by a commitment to fairness, justice, and transparency, inspired by the trials they had faced together. The kingdom flourished as new alliances were forged and old wounds healed. Rama and the prince often reminded their people of the importance of integrity and kindness lessons they had learned through their own experiences. Celebrations were common and joy returned to the land. As they stood together one morning, watching the sunrise from the palace balcony, Rama and the prince discussed plans for further reforms and community projects. They were determined to leave a legacy that would ensure the safety and happiness of their kingdom for generations to come. Under their guidance, the kingdom not only recovered, but thrived, becoming a beacon of hope and resilience, a testament to what can be achieved when leaders govern with compassion and a steadfast commitment to truth. The story of Rama and the prince, from darkness to light, continued to inspire all who heard it, symbolizing a new era of peace and prosperity. I hope you enjoyed the tale. If so, please like the video, share it with your family and friends, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more enchanting tales like this one. Goodbye.